Okay, back again today. UFC 76 and uh, the busy month that is September and MMA continues. This will be on Saturday the 22nd. And although it kind of lacks the main event, I must say it lacks that card that brings it. It has star power and it has some good fights on it. So it's going to be worth the watch on pay-per-view. Okay, I'm going to start at the bottom, work my way up. Um, starting with Anthony Johnson versus Rich Nolo Clemente. Not sure what weight class this fight is taking at. They both fought at 155 and 170. Taking Anthony Johnson with a first round knockout. I honestly don't know why Rich Clemente is back in the UFC. Uh, I think it's been safely assumed that he's been kind of bounced. I mean, outside of Ross Pointing, he's beat no one. I mean, so. He's a solid fighter, don't get me wrong. It's just I thought he, he really has to make, work his way back up. Okay, next up, Scott Junk versus Christian the Hungarian what, Nightmare Walish. Now, I was originally picking against Walish when he was fighting Justin Cully, but now that he's fighting Scott Junk, who's a massive, massive heavyweight, but a little short on the skill end, I'm taking Walish um, via submission in the second round. Because Walish is a solid uh, submission guy, comes out of the American Kickboxing Academy with my fighters such as Mike Swick, Josh Thompson. Uh, Dio, uh, not Dio, Josh Koscheck and John Fitch, and uh, he's he's pretty solid. He looked very good against Anthony Perot. Well, not very good. His stand-up still looked like it needed desperate improvement against Anthony Perot, but nonetheless, he looks solid on the ground. Next up, we have Diego Sarieva versus uh, Jeremy Stephens. I was much more excited with this fight when it was uh, Stephens versus Nate Moore. This one, I think, is, I mean, Sarieva's striking is just deficient. His wrestling is deficient. He's got a pretty good ground game, but he won't get to use it against Jeremy Stephens, I don't think. Stephens is going to take him. They're going to knock him out in the first round. Um, and uh, I don't really see this going down any other way. Next. The hot belt, the fight of the night. Tyson Griffin versus Thiago Tavares, two of the guys who are going to have big futures in the lightweight division. Basically, what this breaks down to is neither man is particularly known for the striking, although I give the edge to Tavares. I give the edge to, in wrestling to Tyson and ground game to Tavares. So, that being that as it may, I got two out, of three, two out of three picks to Tavares. Now, at the same time, we've seen wrestlers who could steal a decision by being a better wrestler and not being a better anything else. Tyson could take him down, ground and pound. Uh, lay and pray and just not get submitted. They could win a decision or even stop the fight. I don't think he stops. I think he has a good shot at decision, but I'm going to take Diago Tavares just because I think he is good enough on the ground. I think he submits uh, Tyson in the, um, I'm going to say, second round. Next up, we have Leoto Machida versus Kazuhiro Nakamura. Uh, for those of you who have not seen Nakamura, you weren't watching Pride. For those of you who have, I mean, you know, he's a sick judo guy, trains with Yoshi at the Yoshida Jojo, or uh, Dojo, and uh, he's got a pretty good ground game. His striking's ever improving, and he's gonna be fighting Machida, but Machida's a sick fighter all around, good striker, a little boring at times, uh, but he's got a solid ground game too, and I honestly, you know, I haven't seen anything spectacular about his takedown defense, but very few people seem to be able to take him to the ground. So, that being said, I'm gonna take Machida, by a decision over Nakamura. Because let's face it, he's not finishing Nakamura, but it'll be a unanimous decision, in my opinion. Just Machida having too much on the feet and just being generally up. Just generally, you know, having a great game plan like he always does and just finding the weakness to Nakamura. He might be on his way to a title shot. This would make three wins. He beat Sam Hoger and David Heath for this, of course. So next up we have Matt. Wyman versus Michihiro Omigawa. Um, I honestly don't know why Omigawa is in the UFC. He's a solid fighter, but not UFC material, not elite level. Um, he's going to be fighting against uh, Wyman, who's of course coming off the Ultimate Fighter. He beat Brian Garrity at the final, and of course lost to Manny Gamburian in the second round on the show. I'm going to take Matt Hansen, Matt, because. Um, as much as I don't like the guy, he is, he's a very good fighter. He does very much belong in the UFC's lightweight division. And, of course, uh, uh, I don't see him finishing Omigawa, though. I do see this going to a decision and Matt taking it. Next, we have John Fitch and Diego Sanchez. This is uh, a bad matchup for Diego, a horrible matchup. It's much like Josh Koscheck, Fitch's training partner. He's a superior wrestler, he's a much better striker, and he's a much better grappler. I see no way Diego takes this fight. At the same time, I think Diego does survive the fight and loses a decision. So I'm taking John Fitch by unanimous decision. 
All right, the final two fights in the car. It's kind of like a co-main event thing to go with here. Chuck Liddell, Keith Jardine. This is a stupid fight for a lot of reasons because A, Chuck and Jardine are just not in the same class. B, I know Chuck just lost the title of Rampage, but you don't put him down against a lower level fighter who also just got viciously KO'd in the case of Jardine by Houston Alexander. That I think is dumb. I don't think that's I think that's against fighter safety and I think that's just stupid. This is, a win here doesn't prove much, really anything for Chuck because I think Jardine might be a little tentative. I think Chuck knocks him out in the first round because Chuck got that KO power and he, he's back on his way to a title shot. But of course, I think Rampage has to lose the title before he ever gets one. Nonetheless, it could be an interesting fight. It just is one that I don't think at this point in their career should be happening. Finally, we have the debut of Shogun. Mauricio Shogun Hua, one of the, probably the best 205 in the world. That's what I call him. That's what a lot of people call him. Uh, he's taking on, of course, Forrest Griffin, one of the Ultimate Fighter 1. Now, I think if you go go with the feet standing, it goes to Shogun. I do realize Forrest has a somewhat of a reach advantage, and he could do a pitter patter for the from Pander from the outside. Problem is, I don't think Forrest does that. If Forrest keeps talking about how he can control Shogun in the clinch, and that's foolish. He's just going to get demolished in the clinch. That's Shogun's world. I think Shogun's a better ground fighter, although Forrest can take him down because he's a better wrestler uh, and hold him down. He may be able to do it. So this could be an interesting fight. I think if we see the Shogun of old, the Shogun of 2005, the Shogun that fought Antonio Rogerio Noguera and fought Hikaru Arona and Alistair Overeem and Quentin Jackson to win the Pride, Pride Middleweight GP back in 2005, this is going to be a sh this is going to be a second round stoppage against Boris Griffin. Now, if we see the guy who came out and fought Kevin Randleman and to a lesser extent. Uh, some of the other some of the other fights that none are coming to mind right now, but mainly the Kevin Roundman fight. I think maybe Forrest has a shot to pull off a decision win. I'm gonna hope for the Shogun of 2005. I'm gonna take Shogun via stoppage in the second round, probably a TKO. That's my thoughts and opinions on UFC 76. The busy month of September continues, and uh, thanks for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe. Uh, no spamming and no. Uh, Claiming it will be deleted, you're wasting my time and yours. And finally, you know, have a good one.